Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Forgot who, who I am and where I work. <laughs> Great. Vocal rooms is the topic for discussion today. What's our two treatment? Absorption and diffusion. That's it. Other companies will call them by crazy names, but the two basic technologies we have is absorption and diffusion. Small rooms by definition. So vocal rooms are small rooms by definition. And I don't know why that is because small rooms produce small sound. I mean, I hate to generalize, but that's the way it goes. I hear those small rooms in today's recordings. I hear the signal processing the engineers put in the recording to, to make the artifacts of the small room go away. The chest voice, you know, that low frequency energy that's generated from the chest into the microphone that bounces off the sidewalls that doesn't fit in these small vocal rooms of today. I hear that. You also hear the, the mouth voice, you know, into the microphone. Uh, if it's a low male voice, it doesn't fit. So I don't believe there's anything you can do electronically to compensate for that. It always sounds fake to me, okay? Maybe it doesn't to others, but to me it does. And if you had bigger rooms, it would be a lot better. So how do we make this small room bigger? What do we do? Okay, well, we know that the treatment of choice in the industry today is absorption. You get a small room, you line the walls and the ceiling and sometimes the floor with foam. Well, two problems. The foam that they use doesn't have the right rate and level for music and voice. It's mainly noise foam, that's what we call it. It's designed to absorb a lot of energy per square foot, but that's not what you want to do with music and voice. Music and voice are different. We, we I think, listen more intently to music and voice than we do to noise. Noise is nuisance, it bothers us. So we, once it crosses that nuisance threshold and starts bothering us and, and it's become irritating, we don't listen. We hear it as noise, but we don't listen to it. With voice and music, we listen. And there's probably a lot of reasons for that. It's a communication language and, and all kinds of things. There's feelings involved and all those good things. So with voice, we have to be very careful with the treatment that we use. The rate and level of absorption is very critical. That's why my foam technology took me eight years and $2 million to develop. You won't find a finer treatment for voice. It's just so smooth. It really absorbs at the same rates and levels that are more conducive to the way we hear music and voice. Probably should do a video on, on the design parameters of that and we will, but so what, what's, a technology that we can take then, once we have the right and right level of absorption to manage the reverberation time in the room to get nice definition and clarity, what can we use to make the room sound bigger in the analog domain? Diffusion and quadratic obviously is the only one we use because it's the only true diffusion technology. I don't care what the others say. There's five rigid criteria of physics to create a diffuse sound field. It's the law of physics, and most technologies don't do that. They'll claim they do, they'll call themselves diffusers, but they're not. Only quadratic is the true diffuser. Expensive, complicated to build, heavy, yes, yes, yes. But the quality is worth it if you're really concerned about your quality. And I'd like to see more concern in that area, believe me. So what's the big downfall with diffusers? They're distant dependent meaning you gotta have so much distance between you and, and the diffuser. So, or so much distance between the microphone and the diffuser because the energy goes into the diffuser and comes back just like a speaker. So every frequency in that diffuser that's been designed for in the room, which is gonna be 90, 100 cycles and up, has to have enough distance to fully form. Well, that's not gonna happen in most small rooms with six, seven, eight foot distances. So you got to make sure you match the diffusion, the prime number sequence to the distance in the control room. You can go on our website and our project pages and look at some of the DIY projects that guys have built using our diffusers and foam. There's a project in our slider now, our slider now, Brenda, she's a, a vocal actress, a voice actor. Is that what you call them? Yeah, voice actor. And uh, she does work in her room there and she uses diffusion too. Now, what do we get? We get air 
with diffusion, separation, and spatiality. If you've never experienced diffusion and you love audio and you love quality sound, please do before the end of your days because I can't I consider myself fairly articulate in, in these terms and stuff, but I can't describe the feeling when you hear a properly diffused room. It's like the room's not even there. And I don't even care what the dimensions are. I don't even care if the ceiling's eight foot. You won't hear eight foot. You, you, won't, hear a, you won't hear a ceiling at all if it's done correctly. I have nine foot ceilings in my studio in North Hollywood. I put people in a chair, I blindfold them. I tell them, what's the height of the ceiling above you? 12. 13, 14, it's nine. Well, I've done that with diffusion. So it gives you this air and this separation and spatiality and all of the good things that we want in our music. Non-localization of source. You can't tell, you hear the reflection. So you gotta be careful with it in a small room. We gotta choose the right sequence so we get the right frequency response to match the distances in our vocal room so we don't get phase distortion issues at the microphone. Because remember, the microphone hears everything. It hears distance, it hears frequency, it hears amplitude. I mean, you can't get away from them th those things at all. So the bottom line here is diffusion will help make our vocal room sound bigger and we can then use less signal processing. Here's what engineers say about our vocal rooms. They say, Dennis, I never touch the vocals right out of the gate. I don't grab for um, reverb. I don't grab for anything else. You know, I don't grab for, what's the other one they always grab for? Reverb, and I can't remember right now. But they're always grabbing for some kind of a signal processing. So they say they don't touch the vocals. They go ahead and put them in the mix, and they wait till the end and then maybe just add a little EQ, maybe a little reverb or something like that into the vocal to make it fit better in the mix. But right out of the gate, they don't, they don't do any processing to it. Wow, what a great compliment you can pay to our technology. You know, to not add something, you use it in the mix as it comes out from the recording, okay? So consider diffusion in your vocal rooms. It's a technology to make small rooms sound larger, but you gotta be very careful. Just call me, send in the room form, fill out your information. Pictures are always welcome. And I'll give you, I'll help you with it. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.